Okay, today we're going to talk about graphing the sine function. So to graph it, we're going to take our points that we know from our unit circle. We're looking at y equals the sine of theta. So from our unit circle, we remember that the sine of 0 is 0, the sine of pi over 2 is 1, the sine of pi is 0, the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, and the sine of 2 pi is 0. Now you're going to hear me a lot talk about this, so I want to point out to you that um, hopefully you realize as we go along, if we continued around the unit circle, we would have these same points. So what we refer to as a complete cycle once around the circle means that my sine function starts at a 0 and ends at a 0. Okay, it halfway between is a 0. And then from zero, it goes up to a max, comes back down to zero, keeps going down to a min, and then back up to a zero. So let's plot that on our coordinate plane continuing. So we have high max of one, a min of negative one. My, I'm going to go out to two pi. That's what we had in our on our uh, table of values. Halfway between was pi. Halfway between 0 and pi is pi over 2. And halfway between pi and 2 pi is 3 pi over 2. So as I said, we start at a 0. We end at a 0 for one complete cycle. Halfway between is a 0. Halfway between the first two is a max. Halfway between the last two is a min. And we connect them. If we, you know, obviously, if we continue to plot points, the values that we have, we would connect them, and we would get a sine curve that looks something of this sort. Okay. Now let's talk about what the amplitude is. The amplitude, remember, is a max minus the min over two. So that, of course, is two over two, giving us an amplitude of one. Our period was how long it took for it to repeat, and we know that that value is 2 pi. So that is our parent function. That's what we call the basic function of our sine. y equals the sine of theta. But let's talk about a few variations that might happen. If we have y equals a times the sine of b theta then the absolute value of A is the amplitude, because we know amplitude is always positive. B tells us the number of cycles that we're going to have from 0 to 2 pi. And 2 pi over B gives us what is called the period of our function. So if I have an equation y equals this negative sine of 1 half theta, my amplitude is my a value, the absolute value of it, so that would be 1. The number of cycles is given to me by b, so I have half of a cycle between 0 and 2 pi. And my period is going to be 2 pi over b, which is 2 pi over 1 half, which becomes 2 pi times 2, or 4 pi. Now let's look at what we're going to have to be able to answer and do with this information. First off, if I give you a sine function, you should be able to give me the value of sine from that. So if I said find the sine of pi over 2, you can look at the graph and find out that the sine is equal to 1. The sine of 4 radians. Okay, that number is not given to us directly, but hopefully we remember that pi is 3.14, and 3 pi over 2, if you put that in your calculator, you will find out that you have that to be 4.71, which gives us this halfway point of halfway between these two. So if we take our calculator and take 3.14 plus 4.71, and we divide that by 2, we're going to get an answer of 3.95. So this number here is about 3.95. Doesn't look like a 9. 
So it's about here, which means that my radians, and if I estimate that point, it's about negative 0 0.8, 0 0.75. We'll round it to 0.8. And you can put that in your calculator, the sine of 4, making sure you have your calculator in radian measure. I believe if you put it in the calculator, you're going to get negative 0.75. So you'll see the we just rounded it. Okay, the last one we have, 3 pi over 2. In this example, the sine is going to be, hopefully you can see that's the min value. So that's our negative 1. Okay, our next problem, we have to determine the number of cycles of each sine function between 0 and 2 pi, and we have to find the amplitude and period of each function. So we know that our sine curve starts at a 0, goes up to a max, 0, min, 0. So there's a cycle, 1, 2, 3. So we have gone three cycles between 0 and 2 pi. Our amplitude, we have a max of 2 and a min of negative 2. So we have 2 minus negative 2 over 2, which is going to be 4 over 2. So my amplitude is 2. And my period. Um, you can see we started at 0, max, 0, min, 0. So this is the end of a period. If this is pi and I have two tick marks in between, that means each tick mark is a third. So this is pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, or pi. So my period is going to be 2 pi over 3. So let's look at the next one. How many cycles? Start at a zero, go up to a max, zero, min, zero. So you can see that we have, again, all right, so this time we have two cycles between zero and two pi. My amplitude, what is my max here? One, two, three. Max is three, min is negative 3, 3 minus negative 3 over 2 is 6 over 2, or 3. And my period, I think we just determined, was pi. That's how long it took me to complete one cycle. Okay, now we're going to sketch some. Sketch one cycle of each curve, assume A is positive, write an equation, and remember our equation that we're working with is y equals a times the sine of b theta. All right, my amplitude is 3. Now, my teacher told me, easier to label the graph to fit what I need to graph. So I'm going to label it with 3 and negative 3. My period is 2 pi. So I'm going to make this point 2 pi. Halfway between is pi. And I'm ready to go because I started a zero, I ended a zero, halfway between is a zero, halfway between these two is a max, halfway between these two is a min. So I'm going to do my best to connect them. Probably not the best looking graph, but you got the idea. Write an equation for it. So y equals, my amplitude is 3, and my period was 2 pi, so that's just y equals the sine of, excuse me, y equals 3 times the sine of theta. All right, our next one, my amplitude is 1 third, so I'm going to label that point on my y-axis, 1 third and negative 1 third. My period is pi. I'm going to a nice tick mark and labeling it pi. And here I have pi over 2. Okay. So, actually, this time, you know what? I'm going to change that a little bit. Let's go back further. Let's go out 4 so you can see how to do it if you need to 
stretch it out some. If I make this pi, halfway between is pi over 2. If you need to find this halfway point, it's half from 0 to pi over 2. So half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. And then to find this tick mark, it's adding these two together. So that makes it 3 pi over 4. Again, we start at 0. We end at 0. Halfway between is a 0. Halfway between the first two, we have a max. Halfway between the last two, we have a min. And then we do our best to connect. All right, look at number 20 here. I got an amplitude of 1.0. Oh, I didn't go back and write my equation. Let's go write our equation. Amplitude is one third. Sine of, all right, my period is pi. And remember, period is equal to 2 pi over b. And if that means that pi has to equal 2 pi over b. So these two have to be the same. So that means that my b is going to be 2. If that was hard, you could always cross multiply and divide to find that. OK? All right, so next we're at amplitude of 1.5. So I'm labeling my y-axis accordingly, 1.5, negative 1.5. My period is 3, okay? And I, I'm going to go all the way out again so you can see. We make that 3. Halfway between is 1.5. Halfway between 0 and 1.5 is 0.75. Add those two together, and you're going to get 2.25. So I'm ready to start at a ma excuse me, start at zero, end at zero, halfway between is a zero, halfway between the first two is a max, halfway between the second two is a min, and again I'm going to connect. So what's happening? I missed my point there. You got the idea here that we're not spending time plugging in numbers. We're knowing the general shape of our curve and knowing how to label our graph to show that. All right, so let's continue. This time we're actually going to be given the equation, and so we got to come up with the information. All right, again, this is my amplitude. That's what I'm going to label my y-axis, 2 and negative 2. My period is 2 pi over b. Here's my b. So 2 pi over pi, which is 2. So I'm going to end at 2. Halfway between is 1. I start at a 0, end at a 0. Halfway between is a 0. Halfway between the first two is a max. Halfway between the last two is a min. And I'm going to connect them again to resemble my sine curve. Again, make sure you put arrows on your graph so that we know that it's uh, continuing. All right, y equals 3 sine theta. Amplitude, hopefully you can see, is 1. So i got to label 1 and negative 1. My period is 2 pi over 3 because it's 2 pi over my b. Uh, I'm going to extend this out so you can see again when it's a little bit different than what we're used to. That's my period. Half of 2 pi is, um, excuse me, half of 2 pi over 3 is pi over 3. Half of pi over 3 is pi over 6. Add those two together, you get 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2. Start at a zero, end at a zero, halfway between is a zero, halfway between the first two is a max, halfway between the last two is a min. And again, you're going to get some good practice at connecting the points to look like the sine curve. 
Okay, this one's a little different. Hopefully you've noticed that we have a negative sign in front. I'm still going to label my y-axis 4 and negative 4, but hopefully you remember from previous graphs that that's just going to take my sine function and flip it. So instead of starting at 0 and going to a max, I'm going to start at 0 and go to a min. I still need to find my period. My period is 2 pi over 1 half, and we figured that out earlier that that was equal to 4 pi. So we'll go ahead and we'll make this one running out of room. This is going to be my 4 pi. Halfway between is my 2 pi. Okay, so I started a 0, ended a 0, halfway between is a 0. Normally, halfway between is a max, but I've got a negative, so it becomes a min. And halfway between the last two is normally a min, so now it's a max. And again, connect. I don't like that. Let me fix that. Kind of missed my dots there. All right. Easier said than done here. Moving right along. All right, the last problem that we have, the period of the sine curve and the equation. Okay, remember our equation that we're looking for, y equals a times the sine of b theta. So we're going to start off, we got to find the period. So we're starting at a 0, up to a max, 0, min, 0. So hopefully we can see that our period is pi over 3. So that answers the first question. And now we have to write an equation. So this is going to help me find if pi over 3, let me put that on the other side. Okay, 2 pi, my period is 2 pi over b. And that's equal to pi over 3. So if I cross multiply, I'll have 6 pi equal to b times pi. My pi's cancel, telling me that b is equal to 6. So when I write my equation, y equals, my amplitude is 1 half sine of 6 theta. Okay, and the last one, start at 0. We're going down, which means I'm going to have a negative. Back to zero, up to a max, so I'm here. To figure out what that is, one, two, three is pi, one, two, three is another pi. So my period is two pi, answering the first question, which hopefully you can see that makes that b equal to one, because if that period's the same thing, two pi over b, b is equal to one. Um, my amplitude, this is a max of, 3 down here to a negative 3 so hopefully you can see that um, that tells us my equation y equals remember we talked about that it's going down first so that's negative 3 times the sine of theta and that is our equation of our graph that summarizes what we need to know about graphing the sine function